In this video, I'm going to introduce the fundamentals of the design recipe. The design recipe consists of a set of steps that you can follow as you are developing a program or pieces of a program. The design recipe gives you some steps to follow and helps you to avoid certain kinds of mistakes and to guide your thinking. For the particular problem that we're looking at here, it's going to seem a little bit silly to take so many steps to define a simple program. However, you will discover that when designing more complex programs, the design recipe is very valuable to you. I should mention at this point that the design recipe is essentially taken from how to design programs. Okay, uh, in this case, we're going to design a simple program that accepts a name and produces a greeting. Uh, in this case, we're going to say, let's say we were to say uh, Rufus, and the result then should be Best wishes to Rufus. All right, very well. The first step in the design recipe is to decide what kind of data the function should take in and what kind of data it should produce and whether we need to add or define any new kinds of data. In this case, we don't because both of those are going to be strings. So we don't have to add anything to the program at this point, which means this video is visually at least very boring because we haven't typed anything yet. Fortunately, that will change. In step two, we can write down the contract and purpose statement. These both take the form of comments. Greeting is going to be the name of the function. I pick the name of the function in step two and I tell you what kinds of arguments it's gonna take. It's gonna take in a string and it's going to produce a string. So we have the name of the function over here, a colon, then the argument or arguments, in this case a string, and then an arrow indicating this is the, what it's gonna produce. It's producing a string. The next line is a one line comment. Pro given a name produces a greeting. Also, I'm going to type the first line of the function. Define greeting of name to be something. I don't know what it's gonna be yet. All right, here comes the next part. This is the part that makes everyone grind their teeth. I want you to write a test case or test cases before you define the function. Oh, this drives people crazy. Okay, it's driving me crazy too. Here's how we're gonna do it. We're gonna say, for a given input, I think we said Rufus, the output should be best wishes to Rufus. Okay, this is what we want to call it with. This is what we want it to produce. It's wonderful to write this down, and most of the benefit, half of the benefit is in just thinking about it enough to write it down. However, we would also like these things to be checked automatically, and we can do that. Here's a call to Rufus, here's what we're doing, and here's what we'd like the result to be. We can use the check expect form to indicate that this, when evaluated, should produce this. This is how we tell Racket, please check for us that this expression produces this result. Okay, great. Having done that, now we're going to go back and define the function. In this case, we can accomplish the goal by using string append. String append best wishes to, and then the name, and then a period. Let's see if it works. I'm gonna run it, and I see here, yes, the test passed. Good news. This is designed to make you feel good. I hope you feel good. I feel good. That's all.